All right, we're back on sports, and you know what? This week has been a good weekend, I should say. Weekend, we, I say week because, you know, football started on Thursday. But it's been a good weekend for sports. It really has, especially with football. But you know what I've seen with football, especially these previous four weeks? Uh, a lot of bad tackling. Lots of bad tackling for, for all teams, it seems. Uh, they must be still trying to get into their groove. I'm sure it'll get better, but I don't want to start with football. I want to start, actually, with baseball. And I want to start with my Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, as we knew, this season was going to be a bad season. We knew this, okay? We also knew that, you know, we just... It, it's pretty much... It was a season where we were just looking, you know, at the new talent that we had. And all these young guys who want to be everyday players... I mean, I play like this. Our previous 10 to 12 games have been piss-poor Horrible. Not only did over the weekend did the Mets celebrate it says Bank Park. I, don't even start on that, okay? But the fact is, oh my God, I can't, yeah, yeah. Um, but but the fact is, these previous ten to twelve games have been really embarrassing to watch for the Phillies. As we know, they've brought on some new guys, and I want to, like I want to chalk this up to the new guys um, wanting to be everyday players and. Not understanding, you know, that, you know, near the end of the season, it's going to take toll on them, so they're getting tired and stuff like that. A lot of people just tell you, no, they just suck. They just suck. But, um, the old guard is also starting to move on. Uh, as we know, a couple weeks ago, Carlos Ruiz, uh, from 2008 World Series team, uh, has moved on, you know, and he said his thank yous. He put a billboard out there, you know, Philadelphia fans. And as we know, uh, Ryan Howard's option has not been picked up. That means that this is the end of the season and probably the end of the career of Ryan Howard in Philadelphia. Now, as much as I would like to say thank you for Carlos Ruiz Chuch for playing the way he has, let's not take away from Ryan Howard's, you know, of his, his talents because Ryan Howard was an integral part of the 2008 World Series team. The guy used to be really, really clutch. So, so for everyone who likes to say, oh, well, he strikes out a lot, and he hits home runs, he strikes out a lot, and he hits home runs, he can't hit the curveball. Remember, during those seasons, that 2008, to, I'm going to say the 2010 Ryan Howard was the guy you depended on, all right? And it wasn't just him also, because you have to treat Ryan Howard, I feel, with the respect that you treat a Chase Utley. You know what I mean? Like, the, the, like those were guys, the core group of guys in that 2018, you know, and on, that you really respected. They, they wanted to win. They came to play every day. They didn't get tired, and they knew at the heat of the moment, this is why they called them the Fightings, because in those clutch, clutch situations, when they were down, they stood up to win. They rose in every night if it had to happen. You know, they were, you know, you say, okay, here it comes, here it comes. And then the guys would rise, and then we end up winning. And make baseball exciting here in Philadelphia. For those who don't understand, after the 2010 season, uh, Philadelphia, a lot of people, you know, uh, players, you know, the core players started falling apart. And they started going their different ways. Um, a lot of fans decided, hey, it's not worth going to the games anymore. And I don't understand why. I don't understand it. I mean, this is your team. You have to understand, when Phillies in 2008, I'm going to say in 2008, I'm going to say in 2007, it started to catch fire. You couldn't walk down the street without somebody wearing a Phillies hat, a jersey, a shirt, a jacket, something. All right? You could. A, a backpack, something. It was Phillies or bust here. And it seems like a lot of people don't understand this, all right? Because, like I said, during those times, you were rooting on those teams. I remember when, you know, when the, you know, the, the NL, you know, the NL championship, and, uh, seeing all the crowds, and then seeing all the people, you gotta think, Ryan Howard, and I, listen, I want to say a big thank you to him, because he dedicated his career here, could have easily, if he wanted to go somewhere else, of course he was getting paid the money, so he didn't need to go anywhere else, but he always, you know, carried himself with class, every time somebody says something about him, oh, he's on steroids, oh, he's this, you know, he was never like, oh, you know, he never went out, off on people, he never did, really, the only time you saw an entire career he's been here, was it Ryan Howard, what, was it last year or two, two seasons ago? Uh, he went off on a ref because he was arguing strikes and balls. But that was it. That was it. You never saw Ryan Howard angry, ever. Even when people say anything about him, he never, you know, he never retaliated, he never, no backlash, nothing. It's amazing. And for the, what he went through, for those who don't know, you know, what he went through off the field with his family and financial troubles and how that was really taking toll on him, um... During this time that he's getting paid all this money and trying to play baseball, they were just sucking him dry. Um, it, it, it's it, it's pretty sad. So the guy had a lot of things going on in his life, you know what I mean, and still kept it professional. No way about it. Even when he struck out, even when those fans booed, he, they yelled, they called him every name in the book. You got all these Twitter GMs on here telling him, you know, Ryan Howard needs to be, you know, he needs to be benched or he needs to go. And of course, there are times where Ryan Howard is benched because guess what? That happens in a lot of players in their careers. It happens. 
But, you know, he needs to go. He's getting paid too much money to produce these type of strikeouts. And you know what? I think a lot of that has to do with the media as well. Like I said, once again, the Philly media, they will tear you apart. When you are an iconic figure, such as a Ryan Howard, such as, because they did it with Jimmy Rollins, they did it with Allen Iverson, they did it at times with Chase Utley, they did it a lot. When Mike Richards was here at one point, Jeff Carter, they did it with them. Uh, you have to understand, when you have become the guy in Philadelphia, all right, you're very popular because you're playing so hard, the Philly media will take you and run you into the mud. And then as soon as you start playing well again, oh, we're friends again. That's how it is. You know, it's the same thing with fans. And it's almost like it, there's a connection with the, within media and fans when it comes to that type of behavior. And the media should know better. But Ryan Howard has endured so much within his career, but especially when it comes as a Philly, all right? We saw when he went out there in the home run derbies, he was just wowing people. And as we know, during the home run derby, it actually changed his swing because, for those who don't know, Ryan Howard at the time wasn't a home run hitter. Wasn't at all. Until the home run derby. And then after that, a lot of people expected him to hit like that from now on. And as you can see, he tried to, you know, live up to the hype. So for anybody who wants to bag on Ryan Howard for having such a great career here in Philadelphia, look, you will be missed. I guarantee you, if you just stayed longer and longer, people would have hated you more. They would have. They would have kept complaining about the strikeouts and not seeing the curveball. Remember, if it wasn't for them starting to throw that curve and nick the very bottom right of the, of the strike box, Ryan Howard, because remember, they, they had to let that go. They had no choice. They wasn't trying to throw at Ryan Howard because he was knocking it out the park every damn night. There wasn't no one trying to beat him with heat. It wasn't until later in his career when he tried to switch that up and then try to beat him with heat on top of the curveball. You know what I mean? That nicking that, you know, that, that, that bottom right corner of the strike zone. We're not going to talk about 2009. Because, like I said, with, with that integral part of that Phillies team, we should have won the World Series from 2009 to possibly 2010. I mean, sorry, 2008, 2010. 2009, we lost to the Yankees. As you know, and everyone knows that was a screw job. They even, even the broadcasters admitted it. It was a screw job. And you had it yet. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that. We're not going to talk about that. 2010, we had that, that squad assembled. I, I didn't understand. You look, look, when you have, and if you look at the, here, the, the Phillies after uh, 2008, when we had that huge, you know, that huge starting rotation, that pitching rotation, it's like, I don't know how you don't win a World Series, but that was Charlie Manuel, once again, trying to break the record instead of letting the guys rest to go up against the Cardinals. So, what do you expect? You know, and then what happened against the Giants and, and so on. So, we see the history. You know what I mean? And if you think about it, the Cardinals and Giants, they had their hot streaks after that as well. And now look at them. You know what I mean? Now we're seeing the Mets somewhat get into that hot streak. You know what I mean? So, and I say it because they, they, they made the playoffs. You know what I mean? So, it's very interesting to see how the NL has shaped up throughout the years, you know what I mean, every team has that, that, that couple years of dominance, then they go away, and then, yeah, it, it's interesting, but like I said, once again, thank you Ryan Howard, for everything you have done, for all the memories you've given us Phillies fans, for, for helping win a 2008 World Series, you're going to be immortalized just for that alone, here in Philadelphia, and, and that's, like I said, it's not like he was just some just, you know, uh, just a, a little part of that, no, he was a, a huge part, he was an integral piece in the 2008 World Series. So you can't take that away from that man. You can't take from any of them. Seriously, Chase Utley, Jimmy Wright, can't take anyone. They deserve the respect. They deserve, you know, they, they deserve that respect. Put a crew of guys out there, everyday players, Cole, whoever. Look, I understand a lot of people didn't like Brad Lidge, but he was out there. I guarantee you he was cheering when he was getting all those strikeouts, wasn't he? When he was shutting people down and getting all those saves. So, like I said, you've got to give these guys respect. You have to because of what they've done here for the city. So thank you, Ryan Howard. I have to say that. Also, Vince Scully, as we know, is retiring as a broadcaster, which legendary broadcaster Vince Scully, um, feel bad. Because it's like, you know, you're seeing pieces of history uh, leave the game. You really are. And then when you see Vince Scully is going to retire, then you have broadcasters like this. Man. Cat not happy about the 5-3. That's a plump pussy right there. <laughs> Bruh, really? Is that where we're going? Okay. <laughs> Let's move on to football. Football, yeah. All right. Let's start with the New York Giants, shall we? Okay. As we know, the New York Giants are going to play today against the Washington, uh, Washington Redskins. You might as well play Washington Redskins again. Uh, <laughs> get ready to play the Minnesota Vikings on Monday night. We will see what happens. But remember, last week, I showed you guys and girls exactly what happened with Odell Beckham Jr., right, when he went against the kicker's net. Well, since that's happened, it seems like the Internet has had their fun with Odell Beckham Jr., 
Every week going to be a rematch of that kicker's net with Odell Beckham as far as I'm concerned, but there's more. Then they went as far as to interview the kicker's net. It got so popular to start making fun of Odell Beckham that people started actually putting him in Mortal Kombat against the kicker's net. Round one, fight. Finish him. You suck, fatality. Yo, yo, Giants fans. Y'all not living that down. What is it with your players always getting frustrated and attacking inanimate objects? I, I don't understand this. Like, this is one of those things that, like I said, when you go back, you look at Amara Stoudemire and what like happened with the Knicks, and now you got Odell. Come on, man. Like, they even made a song for Amari at the time, all right? I wonder if they're going to do it with Odell Beckham. I'm just wondering. And don't, I'm like this, don't let the Giants lose tonight, because we may see even more of that. I'm just saying, we may just. So, um, <laughs> oh my God. Let's move on to the rest of the NFL. As we know, the Eagles, they had off, all right, this week, you know, or should I say last week since we're on Monday. They had off on week four, okay? And, of course, y'all still talking about the Eagles. Still. And what I mean by it's not the fans, no. It's the rivals. Skip Bayless. The, was it the Redskins fans? Like, everyone talking about the Eagles. Why? I'm like, seriously, let's, let's, let's put this in perspective here. Just Skip Bayless is like, oh, I want people to talk about Carson Wentz, you know, and keep uh, forgetting Dak Prescott after what he just did. What? What do he do? That's what I'm trying to figure out because I watched the Dallas game and I wasn't impressed with the Dallas game because if you ask me, and we need to talk about this because 49ers fans, let's be honest here, Chip Kelly blew the game. He blew the game. But I told y'all before not to trust Chip Kelly. But y'all don't want to listen. Y'all don't listen. You can't be up by that much and then let Dallas come back like that. You just can't. You just can't. I'm just saying, you can't. But you got to give the Dallas Cowboys credit for taking the opportunity for coming back. If 49ers are going to leave the door open for them, then yeah, you take the opportunity and you come back and win the game. You do that. But come on, let's be honest here. Dak Prescott, y'all like it, and I'm seeing it a lot. They like to compare Dak Prescott to Carson Wentz. You can't. They only have two things in common. Rookie quarterbacks with intangibles. That's it. Alright? That's it. Oh, well, there's been no turnovers so far. Guess what? They both going to turn the ball over regardless. Because guess what? Every quarterback does it. It's going to happen. The question is, will they be fine or will they bounce back? Guess what? They will. Because I'm sure that Carson Wentz has thrown an interception before in his life and has come back. The same way with Dak Prescott. I'm sure he's thrown an interception once before in his life before getting to the NFL. He'll be able to bounce back. He will be able to, okay? But the fact is, Dallas Cowboys got a number of problems as it is. Dallas, I'm still not sold on Dallas being a threat. I'm not. I'm not. I, I don't see it. I still haven't seen you beat... Pretty much an over 500 team. I'm not, I, like I said, Dallas Cowboys, and it wasn't just Dallas Cowboys. Just said, watch the Redskins did the same thing. Y'all were so quick to bag on us for beating the Cleveland Browns. All right? Redskins fans, you said this a week ago. Oh, the Eagles think they're a hot shit because they beat the Cleveland Browns. Well, y'all beat the Cleveland Browns, you know what I mean, this week. And, and what happened? You was bragging about it. We'll talk about the Cleveland Browns in a bit. Okay? I'm going to come back to that. But I want to move on. To the other teams, okay? We saw Carolina get spanked. I mean, I mean, Jesus Christ, they got spanked. Um, it, like, I put it like this. When Cam Newton goes down, all right, and another quarterback comes in, you have to expect that game. I mean, Cam didn't do that much anyway, I mean, but you still got to give him a chance. He had, what, 125 yards, something like that. Yeah, he, he wasn't really throwing the ball much. He had 30 yards rushing. Like, you really, defense was locking down. They really were. So as far as I'm concerned, it's one of those things. Carolina has not looked good so far this season. So we'll see if they can bounce back. Okay? We'll see. Another team that hasn't looked good this season really that much was the uh, was Arizona Cardinals. They lost to the L.A. Rams. And it was like, you thought because Arizona, they went, what, 13-3 last year or something like that? You thought that they came out guns blazing, especially since this is uh, Larry Fitzgerald's, uh, as he would say, uh, last season. You think they'd just go out and just, you know, guns blazing. But as you know, um, quarterback, again, Gets hurt. Carson Palmer. Hurt. Had to leave the game. So, you got to think. Uh, Cam left with a concussion. All right? Concussion protocol. Carson Palmer left. Uh, it, it's, it's one of these things where you got to keep your quarterbacks healthy. Even if you want to have a, a winning shot at, 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 you know, like at these games, especially games that are up in the air, because you have to look. Arizona versus L.A. All right? Against the Rams. The Rams haven't really been proven yet to be, you know, certified winners yet, but they're doing what they got to do to win, right? 
but they're still they're still up in the air. Someone would say they're the, they're the worst, you know, winning team right now. They would, some would say that, but still, it's one of those games where it's still up in the air. So it's like. You got you to make sure that everyone stays healthy to win that. That's a winnable game for Arizona. You know what I mean? Just like this week coming up, uh, Eagles, it's a winnable game for them against Detroit. I don't want to hear that it's not. But, but, let's keep moving. Like I said, I do want to talk about the Cleveland Browns. Because Cleveland Browns, I don't know what's going on with the referees in Cleveland Browns games. Alright? But, I want to take you back. First, let's talk about when they played against the Ravens, where they got this bogus call for taunting. So, let's look at the call. I don't understand how that's a taunting call at all. He's doing throwing the ball to the side, letting the officials get it. But they're going to throw the flag anyway. I don't understand that. And then yesterday, when you're playing Washington, it's a fumble. Now, granted, it is a fumble, all right? But the refs... You give Washington a phantom recovery when clearly Duke Johnson has the ball in his hand. He's holding it up in the air. I want you guys to pay attention to the left side of your screen because when the refs are looking through the pile and automatically giving Washington the ball and pointing this way, Duke Johnson's like, I got the ball. I got the ball. Now, granted, it's not the only reason why the Cleveland Browns lost, okay? It's not. But you've got to be kidding me that you're awarding the Washington Redskins this fumble. And this is, this is important because, listen, the guy is standing up with the ball in his hand like, come on, all right? And you're trying, you're automatically giving the Washington Redskins the ball, all right, which you shouldn't be doing, and then trying to clear out the struggle that's on the ground, you know, which no one has the ball. They're fighting, but no one has the ball. But they don't know that because they think the ball's still down the pile, of course. And here's the thing, all right? When the referees are doing this, they're not doing their job. If you review this, they're going to say that it's inconclusive. So I don't understand how it's not, how is it inconclusive when the guy literally is standing there with the ball like this? Like, seriously, like, I don't understand how you do that. Clearly, I just, it, it's, it got so bad, it's so embarrassing, that even ESPN today uh, apologized to the Cleveland Browns. They did. But like I said, it's not the only reason why the Cleveland Browns, you know, lost. It's not. But hey, what can you do? I believe this at least the, the shining bright spot out of all this that you can say is uh Terrell, you got you got yourself a, a receiver, Terrell Pryor. That's all you can really say out of, out of the issue. And I guess if Kessler, if you want to say, hey, look, for a rookie, he's not that bad. He he can manage the game pretty well. I guess you could say that as well. So we shall see. But what we're hearing about Josh Gordon, the Browns are tired of Josh Gordon. They're getting ready to get rid of him. Uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. We will. All right. But. We shall move on to the Chargers and the Saints. Now, Chargers and Saints, look, anyone who's been following the Chargers, fo uh, Chargers football this season, it almost seems like it's the same story over and over again for weeks, all right? You play well, you get near down there at the clock, you got to force a comeback, and then it doesn't happen. That's what it seems like what's going on. I don't understand how Chargers fans, for years, and it's been for years I'll say this, ever since LaDamian Thomason has left the Chargers and you got rid of Mark Schottenheimer, it seems like, uh, the team really hasn't been doing really well. And I say this due to the fact is, look at the pieces that you have around Phillip Rivers. He really doesn't have that many pieces. So you have to read so slowly. Over the years, you've been trying to rebuild to get him pieces. He's got to make receivers as opposed to actually having, you know, some standout stars. Um, of course, Antonio Gates you got. But, of course, Antonio Gates was suspended not too long ago for uh, substance abuse. Yeah, so there's that. He's back, but come on. Let's be honest here. All right? Now, with that said, Phillip Rivers had a good game. Last, uh, well, last week, on Sunday, had a good game. He's had solid games, you know, throughout these weeks. But, like I said, it's always an uphill battle. It just is. Now, with that said, the Saints, all right? I am so tired of seeing the Saints give up 30-plus points a game. I am tired of it. No, mind you, no one's saying anything about their offense. Their offense is dynamic. The Saints always have a chance to win as long as Drew Brees is out there throwing the ball. We know this, okay? We know this. However, I have to say this. You had a two-minute warning. Your two-minute drill, okay? And you score a touchdown, and the Chargers are in their two-minute drill. Hurry up. Everything's going on, okay? You sack Phillip Rivers. Fine, you sack him. But Saints, you have given up 34 to 35 points. You're in a two-minute drill. The Chargers are rushing, and you're celebrating. Next play, Phillip Rivers gets up, throws a strike to his receiver downfield. Here's the thing. The receiver... Drops the ball. All he had to do was catch it. Receiver's up there. All he had to do was catch it. That's all he had to do. Catch it. And he dropped it. So what did they do? They tried to go back to him, right? 
They try to go back to him. Over the top. Interception. Saints celebrate again. I don't see where the discipline is. I don't. The Saints give up so much, you know, when it comes to points, as we already know the record. But you've got to be kidding me that with two minutes, in a two-minute drill, okay? And this is why you're losing games like this, all right? Now, mind you, they lucked out on this one. But this is why, okay? Because you got guys who want to sit and celebrate. And you can see it's a number of them celebrating as opposed to, you know, being disciplined and saying, okay, they're running a the hurry-up drill. Let's go. Two-minute drill. we got to stay focused. No, no, not at all. You've given up 34 points that game. 34. It's nothing to be proud of. Nothing. I know some fans are going to say, well, I'd rather be on the receiving end, you know, be on the winning end of that, as opposed to the losing end of that score. That's not the point. Both teams are giving up way too many, 35-34, way too many points for both teams to be giving up. Too, too, too many. But it's absolutely ridiculous that during a two-minute drill, near the end where Philip Rivers has a history of coming back and winning games, he's got game-winning drives, that you try, you, you pull this. Like, this is my problem with the Saints right now. That and the fact that you give up so many damn points. I just, I don't understand it. I don't. Like I said, Saints fans, maybe you can shed some light on this situation because as far as I'm concerned, like seeing, like seeing that, I was, just, I was very disappointed in seeing that. That was embarrassing to see. I'm not even a Saints fan, and it was embarrassing to watch. It was. Just saying. Anyways, I guess we should move on to embarrassing, I guess. So let's talk about EPL. All right. Matter of fact, I shouldn't even talk about the EPL yet. I should just talk about embarrassing in general when it comes to football or footballers. That's right. Before we talk about the EPL, let's do the Crippin' Force Flop of the Week. You cannot tell me that this is legit. Down to you and me uptown, dancing all around till the disco ball pops. But I have to be me, and everyone can see. Nope. Stop. Just stop. Look, it's one thing if someone puts your foot out and you step over it or you take a little hop step, but don't tell me you need to th throw yourself on the ground. There's no reason for that whatsoever, all right? Even in that type of momentum, that type of movement, I'll play this, in that type of rhythm, you can get away from that. No reason to throw yourself on the ground. That's pathetic. Now, speaking of pathetic, let's go on to the EPL. Chelsea, I'm not going to say you're pathetic this week because, I'll play this, your consistency is pathetic, all right? But you did a good job against Hull City. Of course, you won 2-0. I uh, played this the first half. Hull played you pretty tough. All right? They came out guns blazing. They had possession. They had a lot of shots on your net, which I it did not sit very well with me. You know, in general, it did not sit well with me because you shouldn't be that pressured. You shouldn't be. You should be taking control of the situation. However, second half adjustments, you came out and you did what you need to do, which I'm all for. I am. Now, I will say this. Like I said, the consistency of Chelsea has been a real problem this year. I understand we have a new manager, and these players are trying so hard. I understand John Terry's not back yet. But look, I put it like this, all right? That's not an excuse. You got a new manager, all right? You got pretty much a good core of guys, all right? Some, you have some good vets there. You have some high scores, and you got some new guys. It meshes well as far as I'm concerned. So there's no reason why you can't have this type of, you know, this type of inconsistency. There's no reason for it. There's no excuse, all right? Now... As you know, this week Chelsea has off, all right, a lot of bye weeks, and a lot of, you know, but it's, it's more than just a bye week, but let, let's be honest there, that's what it feels like, because in NFL terms, it's a bye week. Um, but you come back, you play Leicester City again, you beat them last time 4-2, so I'm not worried about you play, uh, playing against Leicester City, all right? Then afterwards, the game that I've been waiting for is coming up, that's right, against Manchester United, that's what I'm waiting for. Now here's the thing, okay, I had an opportunity this weekend to go in, you know, I was, I was taking some pictures around the way, you know, some graffiti pictures. I was talking to you guys on Twitter about how I ran to some graffiti artists. And I didn't, I had my Chelsea uh, hoodie on, and I didn't know that the graffiti, you know, a specific uh, graffiti artist was a Chelsea fan. And he was telling me how he hasn't watched Chelsea since they got rid of Marina. He's from New York, alright? <laughs> and I'm like, Really? Really? No, no, we can't have that. We, we can't have that. We, we can't. And, I, you know, I went into detail about how Marino's an egomaniac. And look what he's doing, man, you already. How he's already calling out his players for being mentally weak. Just like he did with Chelsea players, saying they're mentally weak. And if you score one or two goals on them, they'll just fold. Telling the entire EPL last season, that's all you gotta do. Yeah. Pretty much threw all his players under the bus. And he's dangerously close to doing it this season with Man U. Now, of course, last week in the comment section, some of you fans said, as much as I agree that Jose Marino is right about them being mentally weak, the way he's going about it is absolutely wrong. I'm telling you. I'm telling you it's going to happen. 
because if you keep losing, that's the route he goes. He is on meltdown. His ego is his worst enemy. It just is. And you have to understand that, look, no matter how much money you spend on a ball club, no matter what new manager you bring in, it doesn't mean that it's automatically going to equate to we're going to win. We see that last season, all right? All the money being spent between the top ball clubs, you know, football clubs, and who won? Leicester City. Not because they spent a ton of money, but because they showed some grit. Because, as we know, the season before that, they were almost relegated. So, as far as I'm concerned, it takes more than just money. Granted, money helps, but, come on, let's be honest here. And, of course, we saw what happened with that whole, I don't know if you want to call it a scandal, between the secret meeting where they felt as though Leicester City didn't deserve to be there. And, man, you deserve to be there. And, yeah, should we even talk about that? The fact is, you have to understand that regardless if you're a fan of a, a top-tier ball club that has a lot of money, whether it's Chelsea, whether it's Man U, whether it's Arsenal, whether, you know, Arsenal, whether, you know what I mean? Like, look, it, do, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? The fact is, if you stick with your team and they're playing well, they have a good chance of doing something. And a lot of people will say last season was a Cinderella season for Leicester City. But here's the thing. They have to repeat it. They're still the defending champs. You still got to give them their respect. Regardless on who's beating them, Man U's beating Chelsea's beating them, the number of teams have beaten them, you, you still have to give them respect because they are defending champs until a new champion is crowned. Unless they are going 0 and forever and get relegated, then you can say, okay, well, whatever, they're not, they're not a threat. It was a fluke or it, whatever. But those guys worked hard. And they lost a number of pieces themselves. So it goes to show you that, hey, they just have to adjust on what they got. Granted, it's time to dig deep. All right? We're in October now. You know, all the little fun and games, oh, you had your X amount, you know, your handful of games or whatever. Okay, that's done. It's time to get, it's, 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 it's time to get serious now. And I say that, in, it's not just in, in EPL, but in the NFL as well. You've had your, your four games or whatever, everyone should be nice and warmed up. They should be used to this by now. You know what I mean? I'm saying about from a player standpoint. They should be used to do, doing these things by now. So, all right, first four games out the way. Time to go. Same thing with EPL. So we will see what happens between Leicester City and Chelsea. I, I feel as though after seeing how the way Chelsea played them, I think it's still in their head. I, I still think the way they played them before is still in their head. And I think if they come out that aggressive again, they can beat Leicester City. And I put it like this. I think if anything, you need to beat Leicester City to get that good feeling, to be on that good roll, to have that confidence to go into Man U. That's how I see it. To go into the Man U game. That's how I feel. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. But once again, Diego Costa has been... The guy. There's been a number of players, like I said, but Diego Costa, I know his antics, I know, but he hasn't done anything as of late, alright, really, but his, his antics are always going to be troubling. Diego Costa is still scoring at such a rapid rate, and you can't take that away from him. You just can't. You can't. So as far as I'm concerned, if he can keep a lid on it, and he keeps playing the way he does, okay, I'll, I'll go with Diego Costa every time. Because he's showing every time that he can do it. He's missed a number of point-blank range shots uh, in, this, in these previous couple games, which really have me, like, yelling at my TV. You know what I mean? Even, I don't care if he scored one or two goals already in that game. A point-blank range shot where the, the goalkeeper doesn't even see it coming, you should knock that down. Regardless. Regardless. Regardless if it's a win, regardless how many goals you already have. It, it's something that needs to be done. And he's missed a couple of them as of late, which is pretty weird. It's always with the left foot, too. Always. So, anyways, let's move on to the Philadelphia 76ers. For those that don't know, I guess we should talk about this because Ben Simmons, we found out, has been hurt. He may be out for the season. The Sixers are saying that maybe it'll just be three months, but we have some news for that because Brian Colangelo says they will not rush Simmons back. And, and the Philadelphia, the Philly.com, I'll put the link in the info bar, is saying that, um, it's, a, it's, it's maybe a year off is best for Simmons. A year off, a whole season. Now, the reason I have a problem with this, all right, is because they're saying that Ben Simmons possibly is hurt because of his dramatic weight gain. And we need to talk about this, okay? For those don't know, Ben Simmons says that he gained 33 pounds of muscle over the summer. Impossible. Impossible. Unless, unless people, you have an assist. You can ask any bodybuilder. Summer is not that long, as we know. All right? You can ask any bodybuilder. All right? 
Any person who takes any type of supplements. Hell, you can go on bodybuilding.com where people have asked this type of stuff. Well, can I gain 33, you know, 30 pounds within three months or four months or six months? And they're like, <laughs> not a chance. Not unless you got some stuff. They said, unless you have some incredible genes and you have, like, the stars and moon would have to align. Don't tell me the stars and moon align just for Ben Simmons. You know, just not too long ago, uh, was it last season, year before, Eli Manning said the same thing. How over the offseason, you know what I mean, over the summer, I'm sorry, not just the offseason, but just the summer, he gained all that weight, 30 pounds of muscle. Nobody gains 30 pounds of muscle over season. I mean, over a summer. Nobody. Nobody. I don't want to hear that. All right? Anybody who knows working out, anybody, no. No. So something's up, as far as I'm concerned. Something is up. Anybody who works out, you know, no. Nope. Nope. Like I said, you have to have an assist. You have to. But they're trying to say that because he gained that, that's the reason why he's injured. And here's the thing with our injuries is plaguing. Every time we draft somebody, they get hurt. If you don't believe me, let's look at the chart right now. Just a small history that we've had when drafting players. I believe the chart speaks for itself. You've got to be kidding me. This is something that, look, look. Sixers fans, you have every right to be upset. Like I said, when it first happened, we were just like, here we go again. Yeah, here we go again. It's not even about uh, about bad luck at this point. It's not. I, I, I don't see it as bad luck. Like I said, when you have a player who has gained that much weight, and of course trying to get ready for the NBA season, I'm sure it was a pressure to do it too, to gain that much weight over the summer. No, no. We're not even, like I said, it is unheard of that someone has gained 30 plus pounds over the summer like that. Hell, anybody be, able, anybody be able to tell you, you know, oh, so you want to gain that much weight that quick? Say goodbye to your abs. They'll tell you that. But as we know, if you looked at Ben Simmons as late, if you've seen it, because they have a side-by-side -side comparison of what Ben Simmons looked like, of course, because he's so tall, it's not going to really show that much. But, yeah, he's gained a lot of weight. A lot of weight. It is absolutely ridiculous. No, no, like I said, an assist. I can only imagine how much weight people don't understand the health issues here, Okay. How much weight you're putting on so quickly. I wonder what that's doing to his heart. Seriously. Like, this is just... No. No. This is not right. There's something There's there's something up about this. You can't tell me there's not. But, of course, Joel B comes out on Twitter. Don't worry, guys. Everything will be okay. Trust the process. Blah, 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 blah. Just running his mouth. And, of course, Sixers fans are tired of hearing his mouth. So they go after him. Um... Joel B, yo, just play a game. You haven't played a, an official game yet, and you're still, trust the process, trust the, stop, stop. This is the same Joel B that was on the chopping block not too long ago. Matter of fact, I believe this is like his third time being on the chopping block, because he hasn't played a game, and they can't move him because they don't know what his stock is worth yet. Just, I just, I, I just don't, like I said, you want to keep the core guys together just to see what they can do if, like I said, cons you know, chemistry-wise. To see if they can do something first before he decides to start trading people. But this is just this is just ridiculous. It is. NBA preseason's already started. The Sixers, I, I don't expect much from the Sixers, of course, again, this season. But hey, you know, we just got a new uh, training facility in Canada. And hey, we just got a you know new esports team. So that'll hold us over, right? That'll hold us over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't even get me started on the esports team thing. Don't even get me started. I just I, don't expect much from Philadelphia, professional Philadelphia basketball. Like I said, they're still out here in the streets. They're still getting it in. They are. They're getting it in the streets. If anything, I was I would support the, the locals. I would support all the tournaments. You know what I mean? See what's going on. You're going to find some great talent, some great basketball out there. The Sixers is just, they're, they're not a lost cause. You should, I shouldn't say they're a lost cause. They've been a lost cause for a while. Um, but you can't expect much. You got everyone so hype about Ben Simmons, and now he's hurt. Like I said, whether it's three months he's out or the entire season he's out, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at this point. He's hurt. And like I said, I'm still suspect on that. And if I'm right, and I said, every, everything points to red, is a red flag when it comes to that weight gain. Everything. Anybody knows anything about working out. It is a, it's such a, a, a red flag. It is. I don't care how many experts you have. I don't care. No. No. There is something wrong there. There is. You can't tell me there's not. And, of course, now that he's hurt, now, of course, he's going to have, he, he can take the stuff. For those, like I said, athletes, for those who don't remember, athletes, when they're prescribed, you have to think, when athletes get hurt, 
They are prescribed steroids and things like that so they can get back faster. They are. So, I... Yeah. I just... Okay. Anyways, in more NBA preseason. All right. Got a chance to see the Golden State Warriors play the Toronto Raptors. That's right. Kevin Durant looked horrible. Horrible. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what's going on. All right. And, and when I say horrible, I don't mean he's not gelling with the team. No, because they're they're penetrating. Then they're kicking out. He's he's out there in the key by himself, not defending. All right. Taking shots from the key. All right. Three point key. Just missing. Just missing. Like it, it doesn't look good. Of course. Look, preseason basketball is different than preseason football or whatever. Because you're going to have your starters out there. They're going to keep constantly running. People were being blocked left and right, all right, on both teams. I and mean, we're talking starters, all stars, just shots being golfed. Like, damn, what happened? Out to the crowd. Like, I, I don't understand it. At one point, Steph Curry was on the bench, and he's calling for the ball. Mind you, he's got his warm-ups on and everything. He's passed the ball, and he shoots it from his seat. I'm like, I understand it's preseason, everyone's having fun, but what are you doing? Sit down. What's wrong with you? Like, yeah, yeah. So, that's the, that does the thing, too. Um, NBA preseason basketball already starting, which is fine. I don't have a problem with that whatsoever. However, I will say that Golden State-Toronto game, it didn't look like a preseason game. It, it, it felt and it looked like a regular season game, which to me was kind of boring. It really was. Like, when you go back and you look at Summer League, it was like, yo, this is hot. You know what I mean? Everyone running and running. Mm -mm, that pace, once again, slowed down. Slowed down. Every, everything just looked... Weird. It just did. You go back, you know, you say, go from Summer League to that. It's just like, it's kind of hard to go back from Summer League. It really is. But, we'll see what happens. Like I said, preseason is here. And you know what? Guess we should talk about more preseasons. Uh, NHL preseason is here now. And as you know, the Flyers have been playing the previous, I'll say what, week and a half now? This week? This week was big. I mean, they had a number of games. And, of course, the Flyers won some and they lost some. And fans are freaking out. And I don't understand why. Look. This is a feeling out process to see who we have. Relax. Relax. That's all you got to do. The players are out there. The stars are out there. Like I said, it's preseason hockey. I look forward to more Flyers games. Uh, but fans, you got to chill. Seriously, you have to chill. We cannot have this this early in the preseason. You just, you just can't. It's, just, it's ridiculous. No reason. All right? Also, I want to give a shout out Team Canada because they won, you know, their World Cup of Hockey. So I want to give them a shout out. Team USA played pretty bad. Not just bad. I mean, they just they just got limited. They got bounced right from the gate. I mean, they, yeah, it's that was just disgusting. That was disgusting. But congratulations, Team Canada, since I didn't get a chance, you know, to talk about hockey. So, um, yeah, congratulations. But like I said, Flyers fans, please have some patience. All right? Have some patience. So just watch the games for what they are. It doesn't matter if they're playing the Devils. It doesn't matter if they're playing the Rangers. It doesn't matter who they're playing. All right? Just watch the games. You don't even have to watch it for the opponent that they're playing, because that's what it seems like a lot of people are doing. Watch it for the way that their, you know, chemistry has their team building and everything. Watch the way they're playing in these formations. That's what you need to be watching, all right? And see how they get back on defense. That's it. You should be analyzing your team, not worried about, oh, I wonder if they're going to win. Oh, they just lost. Oh, the Flyers suck. Oh, they won. Oh, they're great again. You can't go there. This is preseason. Analyze it for what it is. Because a lot of these guys, they're either going to get sent down, some of them will get called, you know, for some contracts. Maybe some will get called up later. You never know. Pay attention to what's going on. All right? That's what you really have to do. Now, we'll end this video with some Eagles talk one more time. Because I have to say that, um, Eagles fans, we've got Detroit. It's an easy. I won't say it's an easy game, but it's a winnable game. Okay? Our defense shouldn't have that much of a problem with Matthew Stafford as long as they can lock down that, that secondary. Our secondary should be fine. It really should. It should. All right? I, I really don't see... I, look, you got what they got. What Antoine Bolden? That's pretty much it out there. Um, I don't expect much from Detroit. And I'm not bagging on Lions fans. I'm just saying I don't expect much. If uh, and I'm going by, of course, the way the Eagles have been playing consistently. So never know. Maybe that week off made them, you know, made a little complacent. Maybe they'll go out there and lay an egg. We won't know until it happens. You know what I mean? We have to see on the fly. And then, of course, there has to be second half adjustments and everything. We will see. I don't think that. Carson Wentz is going to have that much of a problem throwing the ball in the secondary. I don't see our running game having that much. But if but if there's going to be a problem, maybe Detroit's defense on their lines, you know, may give us some problems. You never know. I expect Carson Wentz to check down a lot in this game until, you know, until he finds, you know, the guy he really wants to throw to. But um, I expect a lot of check downs or at least uh, mid, you know, mid, maybe possibly square ins on, on throws. I expect a lot of that. So we'll see what happens, you know, in the future against Detroit. 
I do see the Eagles coming out with a win. I'm going to be positive about it. Um, and then we'll move on to the next game. You know what I mean? So, hey. But if they lose, hey, it'll be what, 3-1? and one? You can't complain too much. Like, seriously. No one expected the Eagles to even be 3-0 and right now. So, hey, you take the ride for what it is. Hey, just enjoy it. That's what you got to do. Anyways, I'm done. I will talk to you all next week. Y'all be safe. We'll see what happens this week in sports. I'll try to keep up. I'm out.